Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokis Mystery. This will be part 281. <clears throat> we're continuing with our lesson theme, The Ages End. This will be part 3. <clears throat> <clears throat> Scripture teaches the life of the gathered church communities will center on revelation of things to come and the positions of the saints in the heavens as adopted sons of God. <clears throat> so they will be taught a preparation for the <clears throat> rapture, transition into the heavens, the things that will take place on the earth, and much of what will be taught will deal with the inheritance that awaits them. Turn to Revelation, the first chapter, verse 1. Revelation of Jesus Christ, <coughs> which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent it and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So the purpose, main theme of the book of Revelation is to reveal the things that are going to come. That's why it's called the book of prophecy. In the community setting, <coughs> they will be given extensive comprehension of things to come. You see the uh, use of the term scripture of truth by the angel Gabriel in Daniel. Mm -hmm. I think it's Daniel 10. Do we hear that expression used for the book of Revelation anywhere else? The scripture of truth? Mm. No, it's just called the scripture or it's called um, the, um, the word in Daniel 10, verse... Whatever it's also verses. called sayings. Okay. He uses the, ex the expression, scripture of truth. Yeah. And I'm asking, if that expression used anywhere <coughs> else? No. Okay. Does it mean something there that we don't know about? Well, I would say in, in uh, what he's emphasizing is <coughs> the veracity of what he's giving Daniel. Okay. This is undeniable, un unadulterated... Truth. Truth. Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> Revelation 1, verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So you have the two basic principles here. The things to come, which is not optional. If they don't know, if they're not grounded, if they don't comprehend what's about to take place, they won't be prepared for it. They won't make the rapture. Now you're talking mainly about the elders, or you're talking the about any? Yeah, uh, okay, in the, those in the gathering. All right. Yes. Number two, <clears throat> who they are, how they relate, kings and priests. They're going to ex exist in eternity from the focal point of a king or a priest. Will there be any peoples of the saints in the communities? Mm -mm. Okay. No. <clears throat> Why? Because they uh, won't be um, <clears throat> qualified. Number one, they won't be ready. They're going to miss the rapture. That's why they remain on earth. Uh, they're talked about <clears throat> in uh, several different places. In the book of Revelation, they mm -hmm. call my people. Mm -hmm come out of them <clears throat> they're called um, <clears throat> the people of the saints in Daniel 7th chapter they're called the uh, faithful by the Lord when he comes and 
commends them for meeting the needs of his brethren. Yes. yes. So no, they won't <clears throat> they won't be part They're of that. Okay. Yeah. Now we want to focus on an aspect here. The third point. <clears throat> we said they must know things to take place in the future. They must know the significance of their position, king or priest. Mm -hmm. And they must know about their inheritance. <clears throat> what is the inheritance? Drop down to Revelation 21, verse 7. This is the Father himself speaking. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And that will be his God, and he shall be my son, the Father. The Father himself is speaking of the importance of the saint understanding what his inheritance is, because his inheritance eclipses all things. This is a principle that is illustrated. It starts in this life. It doesn't even begin at the gathering. It starts when you step into your position as a son of God by the new birth, turn to Gospel of John, 16th chapter, <clears throat> verses uh, 14 to 15. John 16, 14 to 15. He, the Holy Spirit, shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things, all things that the Father hath are mine. The Father says, He be my son and inherit all things. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine all things, and shall show it unto you. This is a never-ending progression. Of revelation. Holy Spirit starts in this life to those that are open showing the things of God that potentially will become the inheritance of the Son. If a person were not a teacher or an elder, they pursued these truths, they're receiving revelation knowledge. Yes. Immediately that yes. they are invested with the spirit of wisdom and, and revelation. Yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Christians are robbing themselves by not entering into the injunction of the things of the kingdom of the heavens. Colossians, the third chapter. Verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. That's where your inheritance lies. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Because we have no inheritance here. Our inheritance lies beyond this. And the scripture after scripture after scripture is consistently encouraging the saint to elevate his focus, get off the earth. Your focus stays on the earth. <clears throat> You're going to be engaged in things that, number one, aren't going to profit you from an eternal perspective. Number two, are illusory, not real. And number three, 
are <coughs> not profitable but from an eternal perspective. The more the individual pursues his inheritance, the things that are available to him in Christ, the higher of a teacher he's going to be in eternity. Well, let's go on. We get a couple of examples of the inheritance. Turn back to Revelation, second chapter, verse 7. He that hath an ear, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. <clears throat> so, there's a garden, which is a garden of lights, festooned with, to look at them, they look like jewels panorama of blazing brilliant jewels that festoon this garden in the midst of the garden is the tree of life turn to Revelation 21st chapter 24. 21st chapter Revelation 22 uh, verse 2 <clears throat> now we see this picture of the tree of life it's it replicates itself and it becomes in many locations starts from the garden it goes into the river of life on which there are two sides the tree of life is on both sides so you're going to see when you get when you step into eternity a panorama of the tree of life a tree more than one tree of life it's only one tree but it replicates itself it's like there's only one throne but it replicates itself in the midst of the street of it, or on other, either side of the river, <coughs> was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded a fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Notice it, it says one tree. Well, how can this one tree be on <coughs> both sides of the river, which the river is limitless, while it replicates itself in plurality of existence? But it's only one tree. You inherit the fruit through sonship. We just read that. If you're an overcomer, you have access to the tree of life. In Revelation, the second chapter. Here, the nations of them which are saved don't have access to the fruit, they have access to the leaves which fall from the tree. So they come into the city and the tree is for the healing of the nations. They take the leaves, they apply for healing and then they leave the city. The saints, <coughs> the elders, the angels <coughs> have access to every aspect of the tree of life. Every time it bears a fruit, and <clears throat> what you're looking at, of course, is millions of fruit. Yes. So, the way we've described it here is that it seems to be, as you've over and over repeated, it's a multi-dimensional perspective, because there doesn't seem to be a difference from the left or the right side of the river. No, there isn't. Hmm is the replication for the convenience of the sons. 
Yes. Okay. It's your inheritance. What stops the humans, <clears throat> the righteous, and I presume, yes, the humans, from taking the fruit? They can't. So if they reached up to, to take the fruit, what would happen? They won't. They can't approach it. It's too, too glorious. Okay. Everything we said before is in terms of brilliance of light. You're going to be restricted because the light that you have, everybody's composed of light, of course, but the light that you have cannot go beyond the light that you have. You can't walk off the street of the city because the brilliance of everything <clears throat> would not allow you to. That's why it's so important in this life to get as much light as you possibly right, can. Right. So we understand that those who uh, use the leaves can only do so because they're picking the leaves up from the ground. From the ground. Mm. And it's still effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're on a certain level. They can't go beyond that level. Light controls everything. Light determines. That's why <clears throat> you find in eternity degrees of life experience. The highest is, of course, the prototokis that are around the throne. Then you have lower levels of life experiences, the martyrs that come up, the saints <clears throat> who are in other heavens, all experience life, but on a lower level. Yes. When eternity begins, will these people who are using the leaves still need to use them? They're in eternity. So why do they need to heal if there's no corruption and no because sin? Because they just come out of a destruction of this creation. Okay. So these are the people Remember who we said it takes a period <coughs> to become acclimated to life in heaven. Mm -hmm. These are carnal individuals on earth right. who <coughs> are earth-centered. Okay. They never got off the earth. When this thing went up, they went up with it. They still remember how they were killed. So they have to have, the, it talks about the Father himself comes down to minister to them. He allows them to come into, into the New Jerusalem to take the leaves, to apply it for their healing. Okay. He's ministering to them in that way. And of course, other ways. Yes, Mr. Smith. I'm trying to understand, <clears throat> and I know I'm limiting from a human perspective. Let's say I was a human and I wanted leaves. So I'm going to approach the... Uh, the leaves that are on the ground they're not in the river they're on the ground and I'm picking them up but let's say one of the Saints wanted a fruit do they have to wait for me to get done picking the fruit up, or the leaves up before they go pick their fruit or can they do it simultaneously or do they wait for their turn I'm trying to understand how this is all supposed to happen mr. Jones you know it seems like a if you have access to it, that means you 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 have permission to to do it. Certainly. So now, how is it that okay the healing probably would precedent experience? I'm not sure. So that's why I'm asking this question, Mr. Jones. Okay, everything operates in harmony with everything else. The individuals who are partaking of the leaves are on a certain level. The saints who have access to the fruit are on a different level. So you can partake simultaneously. There's no problem, there's no restriction. <clears throat> it's not like here where you have a space problem. Now there's this guy standing in front of the tree picking up the leaves, so you gotta wait till he gets. It doesn't work that way in, okay. in eternity. You just have access to when you wish. whatever manner of fruit the tree is yielding at that time, whatever you desire. To take it. Let me come back to the, the, the leaves just for a moment. Mm. So, after the group of people who are going through trauma have been healed by the leaves, mm. do they need to continue taking leaves after no. that? So, no. would anybody else use leaves after that? No. The leaves won't start falling. They'll stop falling. They will stop falling. Right. The Father Once allows this to happen so that they can get gotcha. off. They, they couldn't reach it if it didn't fall okay. down to that level. Okay. <coughs> I was going to ask that too. 
Okay, turn to Revelation, the second chapter, verse 17. We see another inheritance. 17? Revelation 2, 17. So the fruit and the leaves had different qualities, different... Yes. Okay. Yes. Did, does it, any time the, the, the structure of the, of the tree ever get used? Like the bark or the... nothing? No. No, it's, it's the, the structure of the tree, the infer, inference is, is <clears throat> basically everything is geared to manifest the fruit. But will we need this? Will we need the fruit for sustenance, or is it just for enjoyment? Enjoyment. You have an experience. You know how you when you eat an apple, you get a certain experience from that. It tastes nice. It's juicy and everything. <clears throat> you don't need the apple, but the apple is there for you to enjoy it. The same thing with the fruits here. But in eternity, it's greatly expanded. When you eat something. You don't just taste it. You experience it from the eyes, the ears, the whole being experiences something from that fruit. In eternity, <clears throat> there is no separation of the senses. You see, you hear, you feel simultaneously whatever it is you're partaking of, whatever it is you're experiencing. So, yes. but leaves you only need a certain amount of leaves. If it's a fruit, can you take more than what you desire? Or as much as you want. Oh, as much as you want. Sure. So you don't have, there's no uh, limit. No restriction whatsoever. You That's your inheritance. <coughs> Since we see the tree in the city on the new earth, I presume it's also in the heavens. Sure. In many places. Sure. In every level. Well, no. It's only at the supreme level. Okay. Uh, in the presence of the Father. This is the, this is the heaven of heavens. This is not a Yes, yeah, right. So, uh, are we understanding that only the Prototokos will receive it? Uh, no. Okay. Every born again saint. Everyone, let me see, who participates on that level that's in the city can partake of the tree of life. But to be in that level, wouldn't you have to have gone through the rapture? No. The remember the martyrs come up to the same level. Okay. So then it's on every. They're, they're level in the in city. The they're going to be in the city, <coughs> but they're not on the level of the people around the throne. Okay. So to be, so the people that have different qualifications, you can tell by their glory. Is that how it is? Yes. So they be glowing, and you can tell. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, <clears throat> Revelation 2.17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saveth he that receiveth it. So this is referring to revelation knowledge, the understanding of things. Jesus said, <clears throat> when, they, when he was at, uh, in his ministry, he said, I am the manna, the true manna. So you are, what he's saying here is you're going to partake of, you're going to have access to God <clears throat> in a way in which <clears throat> nobody else can who doesn't qualify for it highest level mysteries revealed to you in an unceasing manner yes sir so you're going to have life experiences in christ that you would not get from the tree of life yes yes are you referring to just the brethren the inheritance the one who inherits the, the, the joint okay. that's what i'm talking about okay yes. so you're going to be teaching all of this Got to learn it first. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's why the Lord is making this available. Because yes. when the when the this thing goes down, uh, <clears throat> what you know 
is going to be the lump sum total of what you can teach coupled with the Holy Spirit that is in you giving you continued revelation on that level. Can we review this on Tuesday? Yeah. I would think there would be important things which you're going to have to break it down in, 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 in superiority, Mr. Jones, that we need to do as the inheritor of everything, taking care of business instead of experiencing life experiences unless we do that all at the same time. It's a plurality of existence. You can be at the table feasting with the Lord Amen. and simultaneously be overseeing as a judge angels. Right. There's no limitation. I agree. We have to get off the human concept if we can. That's why we're being prepared for this now. Yes. Plurality of existence. The Father operates and he has given the sons, this, we, we were created in his image in that respect. Now you know I'm going to be constantly at that table. Constantly. <laughs> no problem. Amen. There was one thing I wanted to give you. Let's see. Lest we... <clears throat> yes. Turn to Revelation, the third chapter. We're going to continue this, of course, Tuesday. So we sit. We, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yo, go ahead. Go ahead. So when we when we are teaching, we'll be able to have the word with us like this. Physically, or is it you just won't be, be reading, it will be oh. coming. Oh, from you. nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. Yay. That's why we have to read now okay. so that we carry it with us when the time. Because they're going to get rid of the Bibles and you're going to be able to have access to anything written. Okay. Revelation, the third chapter. <clears throat> I'm going to give you this principle. Scripture teaches by the time of the release of the letters to the angels, which we talked about. The letters go to the angels, the book goes to the churches. Mm -hmm. By the time of the release of the letters to the angels of the churches, everyone who is ready for the rapture will know the fullness of his calling. Whether he's a king, he will rule the nations. If he's a priest, he will rule as an instructor over the creation. By Revelation, the third chapter, <clears throat> which is a, an evaluation of all the churches, where they stand just before the rapture takes place. Everybody will know where he stands. Revelation 3, we want to start in verse 11. Behold, I come quickly, Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. He's talking to the elder group. Hold that fast that thou, in other words, they have received. They understand. They know their position. Keep your finger here, turn to Revelation the fifth chapter. We're going to come back to Revelation the third chapter. Verse 9, quickly. <clears throat> and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So they have received, they understand fully who they are, what their inheritance is, and they're holding on to it. Yes. Okay. In Revelation 3, it says, Hold that fast without my, what thou hast, so no man can take it. Now, he's talking to the elders. Yes. Okay. How come he's not telling that to the angels? Well, we get that in the next scripture. He doesn't have to say that to the angels because they're already there. Verse 12. 
To him that overcometh, <clears throat> I'm going to give you the rendition from the Greek into linear. <clears throat> this is chapter 3, verse 12. Yes, chapter 3, verse 12. Chapter 3, verse 12, it says, V overcoming. V overcoming. What is he saying here? He says, The overcoming will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. He's not talking to them to overcome he's pronouncing the condition that they are you are overcome just like Jesus he said I've overcome the world you can rest now because I've already done it. he's telling them the same thing you are now the overcome therefore I'm going to make you a pillar in the temple of my God. He doesn't tell them the whole, have to tell them the whole fast okay. because, because they've, they've already right. received. Right. So he's not talking about something that they have to do. He's making a statement about what they've already done. Yes, he's, yes, he's defining what they are. It's an eternal condition that they've entered into, mm -hmm. that of the overcoming. So wherever they go, just like him, <clears throat> whoever they come in contact with, whatever situation they encounter, it cannot succeed because they are there to make sure that God prevails. They are, in essence, the essence, the quintessence of the overcoming essence condition. In eternity... <clears throat> Remember, it's not a thing of doing, it is a thing of being, being. Exist, state of existence. Right. But they're executing his will. His will is thus and so. They are the ones who are making sure, as you say, that. Well, yeah, what he's so saying happens. is because you are this, mm. now I'm going to make you the supreme. <clears throat> putting you in, making you a pillar, putting the name of my father on you, and they're there. Sure. There's nothing else. Sure. Beyond that, stunning. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I'll write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. The word right there is etch. <clears throat> what does he mean by my new name? Well, Jesus doesn't have a new name. His name above all names. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the new name he has for that person. Okay. I'll write upon him my name for you. It's going to be etched in you for eternity. So it's an identity you okay. take on as a pillar angel, which is <clears throat> what you will be referred to from that point, you ain't going to be Chris anymore. So each is unique. The new name. Right. Sir. I will do thus and so. Mm -hmm. Not I have done thus and so. Is that happened yet? At the uh, adoption is when that happens? Yes. Remember, this is just before the rapture. Mm -hmm. So he's addressing everybody mm -hmm. in the Prototokos group, the elders and the priests what's going to take place at the glorification. But at the point that you're talking about just before the rapture, mm -hmm. the evaluation has already happened, and yes. those who will be, as he's pointing out, will be. Yes. So between that point and the actual rapture, there's no qualifying for anything or making no. sure of this, that, and the other. No. It's done. Yeah, look what he says here, verse 11. Uh, Matt, actually, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Because... Thou hast kept the word of my patience, to see, Elder Group. I also will keep thee from the time of temptation which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay. So he's talking about you're going to be taken out. You've, right. you've arrived. Right. All you have to do is hold on to what right. you have. <clears throat> and then he addresses the angelic group in the heavens. 
<clears throat> because you are the overcomer, this is what's going to happen to you when I come. The glorification, the adoption. What we find here, the book of Revelation is a unique book. It's the only book that's going to survive out of the 66 books in the canon of Scripture. Yes. Okay. He's saying, you got to hang on to this. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean I, I set it down? I'm not hanging on right now? I mean, it's the most important thing that I've ever experienced. Why would I not be hanging on to it? Why is he telling you you got to hang on to it? Is there a chance that I'm going to set it down and not... And that There's a chance. Remember that the influences are going to be the greatest at this point mm. of the Luciferians to get them to not focus on what's about to take place. He's just telling them, you've got it now. Make sure you hold on to it okay. because there is a temptation coming. To succumb to the influence. <laughs> a distraction. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we're still vulnerable to temptation. Sure. Until, Until you're you get glorified. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's why during this life, you bolster yourself. You, you put on the full armor of God. You continue getting the oil as often as it's available to you to get so that you're not caught short. You're not... You're, you're so substantiated because you're, you've lived the life of Christ. Because you're not a foolish yeah. virgin. Yes. 